Hey guys, this is Andrea, certified translator and a real estate concierge. Today we're talking about the regular things, the travel to Belarus, how the things are, a bit of economy, a very little bit of politics, to be safe, and uh, some other related non-related things. This is a biased update about how things are here. It's not a media piece, it's not endorsed by anybody, it's only helped by the generous people who share their 5, 10, 20, or more dollars to the donation platforms that we, uh, whose links are underneath the video. Thank you very much for your feedback. Thank you for staying with the channel. Let's have a look at the headlines of the week ago. COVID is pretty much gone from almost all angles and possible aspects. The only thing you need is a negative PCR. I believe it's now 48 hours valid for incoming travels. And if you are to come through the Western border, you'd need a visa, of course, unless you want to specifically visit visa-free areas of Grodno and Brest. I'll leave a link underneath the video. Visa-free through the airport works as well, though now the number of countries you can fly in without any visa hurdles like Turkey, uh, Kazakhstan, Armenia, and Georgia, that's a very short list you should agree through Russia you'd need a Russian transit visa I wouldn't recommend that maybe a bit troublesome otherwise it's the same 30 days as before fly in fly out sometimes people are asking about the unfriendly countries list that for sure includes UK US Canada and EU members that introduce sanctions against Belarus I guess some more than others but generally that's the core of this list and there's no maltreatment of citizens of these countries. There's no biased approach or some kind of extended procedures for these people. We've just been into immigration office with the American guy and uh, that was just absolutely fine. Minimal fine for our case and that's it. The story with the American guy was kind of interesting. He was taking a land trip out of Belarus towards Poland on a bus and as an American passport holder he obviously needs no visa from Poland and it seems that Poland only out of the list of Lithuania, Latvia, the land border that we have with only Poland makes an issue out of that. The guy was turned back and he was told that he has no solid reason to visit Poland. I mean, I would understand if the Belarusians had turned him back, but that was on the Polish side. So he had to take a bus here, outstate his visa and had some bureaucracy on the way that he, we had to resolve. That's where concierge come handy, comes handy, by the way. If you know anything about this thing with the Polish migration legislation, maybe COVID limitations of some kind, please let me know. Leave a comment underneath the video. It would be an interesting reference to read. Speaking of foreign travelers and their challenges here, I specifically always very kindly insist that they bring cash. Uh, the recent developments are as follows. The foreign cards and ATM withdrawals to foreign cards now come with 20% commission charged by a local bank. Local rate right now is 2.70 against ruble, now lower to some 2.63 rubles against the dollar. And the local banks explain that by having to buy uh, foreign currency from the bank that issued the card at a higher rate of 3.4 so that may be a more realistic exchange rate so bring the cash and if you don't have uh, an opportunity for that just make sure your cards are from different banks and you can try them in different places because some some, some places here like states shops are tied up to the sanctioned banks and they no longer approve the transaction uh, on this card however while ATM withdrawal may be damaging to your budget shopping uh, restaurant and shopping expenses if the card is accepted is uh, coming on a very favorable rate. My American client just confirmed that. To some extent, I'm rather happy that my prediction of a five-week economic collapse didn't work out, which proves one given fact. I'm not an economist, I'm a linguist. So the uh, feelings that something's going to happen are mounting up as more and more IT guys, the GDP makers, are leaving the country as uh, import companies are cutting their personnel as local factories, local agencies, state-employed people are getting their salary delays and bonus cancellations. And this may be a trouble in the long-term run. As you probably know, the local ruble, Belarusian ruble, is tied up to the Russian ruble. Russia is the main consumer of our products. Most of the machinery is exported there, foodstuffs and everything. And to dollar and euro, not so much. But the moves of the ruble are mostly determining the rate of the Belarusian ruble, which is now improving and the rate against the dollar, for instance, is going down by and by. But the long-term predictions are, although the geopolitical improvements in Russia are strengthening their ruble, our own currency may not be so good in the coming couple of months because 
the pressure is mounting up. Sanctions aren't really helping to get the local factories their raw materials, technologies, equipment and other things that they need to produce the end product and selling the end product, although mostly to Russia, may not be so good because Russian ruble isn't really so good, you know, outside Russia. So here we're also talking about the general drop of the level of living, uh, living standards, people uh, who basically created the uh, GDP, the IT guys, on top of others of course, were scared off by another development, the war, and such uh, larger businesses like uh, the chemical guys BASF and uh, such like, payment services, both services like UPS and DHL are out of the country as well, and the list is quite long, services are stopping. This is not helping to, you know, diversify the economy and this definitely makes the logistics complicated. Speaking of sanctions here in logistics, the EU has banned trucks and um, boats and train cars from Russia and Belarus to enter European space. Uh, equally, EU trucks and logistical operators are banned from here, so now they're fiddling with reloading stuff from the EU plated truck into locally plated truck and getting it to the end customer, which I guess is just not uh, helping the price of the end product. And the main thing, speaking of sanctions, is the very recent development. Gas has been cut off. Gazprom has uh, stopped the supply of gas to Poland and another European country. And my question of the day to you guys, what do you think is going to happen next? Is Europe uh, ready to actually re uh, tailor its uh, supplies of natural gas and other resources that are not coming from Russia anymore. Are they going to make it or is it going to be pretty bad? And again, your bet, what's your expectation? Is Russia going to consume its own gas and, you know, its economy going to collapse for losing um, profit from gas or is the European economy going to collapse a bit sooner because prices are mounting up, inflation is galloping in Europe and uh, people underneath the video are not leaving very optimistic comments about food prices and utility bills, especially UK, Germany to start with. Well, the parties involved seem to be competing with each other to just sanction, sanction each other the best they can. Prices are increasing here as well. Transportation prices are up by some uh, 7 to 10 percent. Yandex is up, but it's been, uh, it's been a while since they were uh, getting expensive, so Yandex offered pretty cheap rides. It's okay. Uh, transportation like trains and uh, metro and public transport in larger cities is up in price, and so are the telecom services. To give you an example, unlimited traffic, uh, internet traffic here is about 100 megabits a second, is about 15 euro per month. Uh, so far, I wouldn't say it's too bad. The heating season is over, so the uh, utility bills aren't really hurting too much anymore, but generally they're up as well, by and by, and soon, now, now it's declared that the state subsidizes the utility bills for the citizens of Belarus, foreigners who buy apartments pay the full fee for gas and heating, for instance. The um, uh, 52, a 52 meter apartment in the city center, if there's one or two persons living, is bound to cost some uh, 35, 45 US dollars per month. That's uh, heating, water, the uh, electricity, lift, if any, garbage uh, recycling and stuff like that. Now countrywide, journalists are reporting outstanding utility bills with the population. They are growing. To continue the line of sanctions, curiously enough, the uh, Belarusian government had uh, sanctioned some imports from the unfriendly countries, but recently they undid a few restrictions, including apples and pears. These are now okay to be imported into Belarus. I guess it's too bad with our own apples, no doubt. And uh, the booze is up in price. Alcohol is getting more expensive. We are the ex second best drinking country in the world. I guess now in our top 30, we are bound to drop further. In real estate, things aren't entirely fun for the sellers. As you know, probably the uh, start of the war, the drop of the currencies uh, basically created an explosion in the market, a shock. While the uh, sellers uh, were having tough times uh, selling their offers, people leaving, people changing their plans, increased the number of offers, and the buyers, now with uh, their savings 
uh, able to buy them more, just took a break. And there's a 30% drop from February, stretching into March, and the um, demand in, uh, on the market is not so good. So that's buyer's market, and the buyer has a good choice. Luxury flats are obviously troubled. Luxury properties, flats or houses are troubled. And uh, there aren't really people running around with uh, cases full of money, although some of my relocation people are shopping around now at their own pace, no rush. And they can get pretty good things. So if you were planning to buy something, uh, you know, upscale, somewhere as exotic as here, that's the right time. At all times, at least recently, the best sellers are one and two bedroom apartments. By the way, we don't have bedroom term here. We have one or two room apartments, meaning literally both rooms or one room only can be a bedroom and the other can be a guest room if it's a two room apartment. According to the recent statistics published by the NCA, National Cadastro Agency, the upgrade of the BTI, the best sellers are uh, Khrushchev and Brezhnev flats. I'll release a clip about the types of lodge here and the standard, apart standard apartments from the late 90s that have uh, human design, human oriented planning and design and uh, views and prices. The uh, Stalin apartments aren't selling too well because they're kind of luxury segment or their own segment close to the luxury, so the buyers aren't really lining up. But there are some pretty handsome offers in the city center. If you're interested, you know where to find me. Right now I have a client in town, let's simply call he's from the West and he had no trouble opening up the account, transferring money, almost no problem. Now we know which bank will work with us and I'm afraid it's not Alpha anymore. Uh, things aren't very easy with the Russian sanctioned bank and its local branch, the Alpha, so we are switching boats. And uh, after browsing some 10-15 options, some of them really didn't look, look like the pictures, we have uh, arrived to a deal which will hopefully clinch quite soon. And uh, the conclusion here, one of the conclusions, one of the wisdoms here is if you are coming for a short period of time, like a full month or three weeks or something, it's best to arrange the search of your property before you arrive here, to have it shortlisted, hand-checked by somebody uh, trained for that. That could be me, that could be an estate, a real estate agency that you contract with, it's up to you really. And this way you'll save a great deal of time because uh, people are away, people are needing documents and that kind of stuff. And that's really something you should consider if you're shopping. Uh, one of the groups of sellers we were particularly interested in were the guys who were relocating outside Belarus. In many ways this would make the transfer much smoother and faster, although this is the niche I would really shop in because it may carry some more advantages on top of the transaction itself. The local buyers aren't really active because they have to take a hold and uh, take a break and see where they're going, where they're getting with their savings and where their earnings are taking them. They no longer can afford a newly built uh, block which is under construction because there's a risk it never will get built. They, never, they no longer can afford loans, although something like 20% plus to zero a year was considered kind of okay. Now they're 22, 24 annual rates, um, which people are not supporting anymore because their salaries dropped. And of course the uh, IT guys whose salaries were handsome enough to afford that, they are gone or they are on the way. So the local buyers aren't too active either. Thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, leave your feedback underneath. Uh, my donation links, my contact details if you need me are underneath the video as well. Happy for you to still be watching, uh, travel wisely, shop responsibly and hope to see you in Minsk someday. Cheers!